Hey there, want to do another Airtable tutorial, this time on how to use Airtable to create a personal budget. So this is something that I looked for in the past and used tools like Mint, uh, but they really didn't give me the flexibility that I was looking for, and Airtable has been a great solution uh, for me, so I wanted to share it with you. Uh, so I will show you how I have it set up, and obviously you can always customize things. One thing I would note is this is just for example purposes only, so when you see some of the numbers in here, uh, that shouldn't necessarily, even the ratio shouldn't align with your personal budget. I just did it uh, for the sake of this video. So just keep that in mind as we go through. Um, so the first thing that we're looking at here is the budget table. And this is going to be kind of the, the overarching bucket of where all the money is allotted. So if we look at a row here, like auto and vehicles, we'll see that there's categories such as auto insurance, auto payment, gas and fuel. Uh, so that will all roll up into this auto and vehicles budget item. Same thing with below. So we'll see in a little bit how we use uh, the categories. Uh, a few things to note when you're setting this up is this is a zero based budget. So we'll see that I have a line in here for income. And you'll see that it's a negative number. And this negative number should equal all of the other rows. Uh, obviously a negative of it. Um, so just for instance, I'll change this to negative uh, 60,000. And then we'll see we would have $10,000 to a lot somewhere. And I do have um, a line item here for uh, investments or um, savings. So, you know, in the, in the good event that you have uh, some leftover, uh, just put it in that bucket. So just that's how that works. And then one other thing uh, is you'll see I have a budget item called non-budget and ignore. I have an ignore category, and that's for things like um, credit card payments or if you're transferring money because you don't want to double count. So if you spent money on a credit card and you log that transaction, you don't then also want to log the payment to that credit card because you would be double counting. So uh, very few fields on this table, which makes it super simple. So we have a currency field and just using kind of the standard uh, rules there. Then this is our uh, link to categories field, and we're, we're going to need that for some of the formulas as well. Uh, scrolling over, we'll see that I'm using a roll-up field. So um, in this roll-up field, I'm getting values from the categories table, and I'm just going to sum those values. Uh, this is just a, um, a formula field, so I'm just taking um, our budget versus um, so let me scroll over. I'm taking our budget minus this field, and that'll kind of show um, how much is uh, left. And then um, finally, we're going to have the uh, percentage to budget. So as the year goes on, we'll be able to see um, how much of our budget we've spent. So, and you have to know that, you know, after January, you're about 8% uh, of the way through the year, February 16. Uh, percent. So just to know those things, that kind of gives you a, a good idea of how you're trending. So now moving on to the categories tab. Again, these are the more granular areas that will make up uh, your budget. And it's a really great way to be able to track where your spending is going. So instead of just saying, I spent you know, this amount on food, I can see how much was on grocery, how much was on fast food, how much was on coffee, etc. So uh, this gives you some great insights into how you're actually uh, spending money that roll up into those budgets. So you can have as many um, categories as you'd like, um, whatever fits your need, and then just make sure that you link them to a budget. Um, then here we have just a couple of fields, and here I'm grabbing um, the rows from the transaction table, and I'm looking for um, anything that would be labeled as a debit, which I'll show you in a little bit. And from that, um, we just want to make sure, and actually let me change this. Um, I'll probably have to do this for the other one too. So I just want to make sure that the category is not ignore. Again, we don't want to be counting any of those uh, credit card payments in here. And then we're just going to sum the values. Confirm that change. And I'm sure I'll have to do that for here. So this one we're just looking for um, uh, credit. So this time we're looking at um, the transaction fields that are related to credit. And let me just show you what that looks like. Oh, let me save this first. So on our transaction table, we'll see that um, we have two fields here, credit and debit. So that's just what I did uh, on this categories, uh, on this roll-up formula. So I'm grabbing those values 
and I'm not getting any of them that have a category of ignore. The transactions, this is just a link uh, to this transaction table, so pretty simple. And then finally, our calculation is going to be debit minus credit, and this will show you how much we've spent in each of these different uh, categories. Third table is just the table called uh, vendors, and you don't have to set this up right away. You can set this up as you go. Um, just a way to track where you're actually spending your money with um, you know, specific vendors in case that's interesting to you. Uh, you actually don't need this table. I find it useful, but uh, if you, uh, so feel free to use it, but you don't have to. In fact, I've just let, these are standard fields that come anytime you create a table, you don't need these. Um, I do link them to my transaction uh, table. And then here I also just have a roll up field that's just looking for debit. And um, I can create a, a filter rule here where I can just say category has none of ignore, even though that shouldn't ever happen. Um, I'll just add that in. And then um, one reason that I do this too is because um, when you're getting uh, transaction downloads, when I download uh, information from different banks and credit cards, uh, sometimes the, the vendor name can be a little bit different. So one time it might say Amazon, one time it might say AMZN, sometimes there's a bunch of characters after. So this is a way that I can do it to kind of normalize um, how that comes in. So now we'll get to the fun part and this is our transaction table. And the reason this says error here is because this is a formula because I want to have kind of a unique way to look up records. So I'm just taking um, the account, the date time, the trans uh, of the transaction date, and then the description. So in here, I have a single pick list, and this will show the different accounts that I'll use for uh, spending and saving. So I'll have a Discover card, Chase, a store credit card, checking, savings, American Express. And again, this will help me kind of see where, where my different spending is going. Just a transaction date. The vendor here, again, is linked to this table. I can put in a description if I want, especially I do this a lot uh, with Amazon because I don't remember what I bought uh, at Amazon. So this is a good way to help me remind, remember that. Um, our categories tab, which we've talked about, the transaction type and here, uh, it can either be a credit or debit normally, uh, but it could also be a payment or a transfer um, as I've talked about. And then whether it was a credit or a debit. And I also ha just have a field here for recurring because I think a lot of us get caught in uh, a lot of recurring transactions over time and you might want to be able to uh, see what those services are. So I'm going to uh, paste in um, some transactions here and I'll show you a little bit about how this works. Okay, so the first one that I have here is for a Discover card and it's for Creative Cloud and we'll see that I have it under the category of web. Uh, it's a, it is a debit and the money came out and uh, 52.99 and now we'll see that the recurring is monthly. So I actually have a, a different view here uh, that just looks for recurring transactions. So again, great way to be able to track uh, you know things you may have forgot about that you're still getting billed for monthly. So hopefully that doesn't happen, but uh, it's a great way to track that. Um, then I also had um, a fuel purchase here at Bay Sitco. And I, in my description here, I just wrote down how much the, uh, how much it was per gallon at that time. Again, a debit, this wasn't recurring. Uh, here we have our store credit card with clothes. Um, then the next one for cleaning products. So both at Target, um, both debits. Um, so now if I go back and I look at our vendors, we'll see that, um, so we have the Bay Sitco one, I have the Adobe one. And then going down to target, we'll see that the total is 110.98, which is just a combination of this. Um, so this is working well. Now I'm going to return, make a return at target. So let me come here. So again, we'll have, uh, we're returning some washcloth. Uh, it is in the, still want to put in the category because this we do want to track and we'll see that it's a credit. So I put um, the money here in the credit uh, um, column. And now when we go back to that vendors tab, um, or sorry, not the vendors tab, the categories tab, 
down under household, we'll see that it's back to 8624. Uh, so it took basically these, the sum of these minus this, and that's how we get to where we're at um, for our categories. So now I want to, uh, we got paid, so this is exciting. Um, and we got paid to our checking account. Um, I, I have the vendor here, but this will just be whoever your employer is, I'm putting in paycheck. And we'll see that we got paid $500. And now when I come to our budget tab, we'll see that um, now we're down to 49,500 left. Um, so we're 1% we're to there. Um, now we're going to make some payments to those credit cards. So we'll see here is where I have that ignore category and the transaction type of payment. So if we go to um, our categories, there's really, there's nothing uh, in here because we've chosen to ignore those. And I'll just put in a few more transactions. So again, we have some more, um, some more fuel here and some more uh, target uh, purchases. So now, um, again, we can go to our vendors and we can see um, how much we, we've spent here. And if you want, you can do things like sort um, by debit roll up. And so we can see for most, we can see how much we spent at Target, how much we spent at BP, Adobe, etc. And then our categories would be the same thing. So we can see um, our spending by each category that will roll up into the budget. But now when we get into budget, um, and let's look at things like fuel. So we can see we've spent $144.30 total. This how, is how much is remaining. And we've spent 4% um, of our budget uh, thus far in the year. So again, we'll great, give you a great way to be able to track um, really how you're how you're doing throughout the year and again this can uh, grow and change as you need to so um, I hope you found this helpful you can always download the example base uh, below and always reach out if you have any questions